video will present how to calculate required belt pull and required power to move discrete packages on a roller supported belt conveyor. This video is a complement to videos we've already posted on our YouTube channel and our website which cover how to calculate belt pull and required power to move packages on a horizontal slider bed, how to calculate required belt pull and required power to move packages on an inclined slider bed, and how to calculate belt tensions and required power on a bulk handling conveyor. You can watch these or any of the other dozens of videos we've already posted by clicking the link in the upper right hand corner of your monitor anytime during this video. Now let's get to it. How do we calculate required power and required belt pull? We know that power equals force times velocity and it's convenient in conveyor belt terminology to think of force as belt pull which is the tension at the immediate vicinity of the drive pulley and we think of velocity as belt speed. So required power equals belt pull times belt speed. The equation which Romeca uses to calculate required belt pull on a roller supported belt conveyor for packages is this one. And we use this equation when the brand of roller has not yet been selected and the brand of belt has not yet been selected and our conveyor is more or less an average type of conveyor. Neither particularly big or particularly small. So the simplifying assumptions are as follows. We use 0.04 for roller bearing friction. Of course, we use L to specify conveyor length. And we use these three terms, PN, PPR, PM. Let's define those terms. PN we define as the weight per foot of the conveyor belt. PPR we define as the weight per foot of the rolling stock or the rotating parts. And those include the rollers beneath the carrying strand and the rollers beneath the return strand. And finally, PM, which is the weight per foot of the product to be handled. Now let's see how to use the equation by selecting a set of parameters. We'll assume that this is a 100 foot long conveyor belt and at any point in time it will be holding 25 packages and their average weight is 50 pounds and the belt speed is 100 feet per minute. These are the simplifying assumptions we can use to calculate belt pull and required power. In this case we said that PN is the weight per foot of the belt so uh, a handy um, number would be five pounds per foot of belt. The equation calls for two times the weight per foot of the belt, so that's two times five pounds per foot of belt, or ten pounds per foot. Next, we look at the weight per foot of the rotating parts. If we don't know the brand, a good simplifying assumption would be five pounds per foot. If your roller is going to be particularly long or particularly thick walled, you'd need to adjust that number. And then finally, PM is the weight per foot of the product to be handled. And as I mentioned previously, I said at any point in time, we would have 25 packages on the conveyor. And the average weight of the package is 50 pounds per package. And the conveyor is 100 feet long. Therefore, we could say that PM equals 12.5 pounds per foot. 10 pounds per foot, 5 pounds per foot, 12.5 pounds per foot. Summing those three numbers, we can calculate required belt pull as follows. Roller bearing friction of 0 0.4, conveyor length of 100 feet, times a total weight on the rollers equal to 10 pounds per foot of belt, 5 pounds per foot of rolling 
stock and 12.5 pounds per foot of product. 0 0.04 times 100 times 27.5 yields a required belt pull equal to 110 pounds. I said at the beginning of the presentation that we know power equals force times velocity, or in conveyor belt design terminology, required power equals required belt pull times belt speed. So since we know that the required belt pull is 110 pounds, and we know that the belt speed selected is 100 feet per minute, the product of these two numbers is 11,000 foot-pounds per minute. And we know in imperial units, one horsepower equals 33,000 foot-pounds per minute. Therefore, our required power is uh, calculated in this manner. Power equals 11,000 foot-pounds per minute divided by 33,000 foot-pounds per minute per horsepower or 0 0.33 horsepower. That's how much power our conveyor will require to move 25 packages at any point in time at 100 feet per minute. Now let's pause for a minute before we select our power to drive this conveyor belt and have a look at sensitivity analysis. So we just calculated that 0.33 horsepower is required and we might be tempted to select 0.4 horsepower to do the job. But let's suppose that that 50 pounds per package average design rate was based on moving in an eight hour shift 600,000 pounds of cargo in 12,000 packages. Let's just assume that 600,000 pounds of cargo in 12,000 packages gives us an average of 50 pounds per package. Sounds like good news. But now let's say on further inspection as we double check the sensitivity of our uh, results, we find out that the plan is from 8 to 10 to move 120 pound boxes and from 10 a.m. to the end of the eight hour shift, we're moving packages at 26.67 pounds per box. Let's see what happens when we plug in the uh, product weight per foot based on 120 pounds per box and see what happens. You remember how we calculated the factor PM previously for boxes which weighed 50 pounds each. Now let's take a look at what PM uh, equals when we use a box weight of 120 pounds each. We have 25 packages on the conveyor at any point in time. Each package weighs 120 pounds divided by 100 feet of conveyor. We learned that PM equals 30 pounds per foot of product. Now what is the total weight on the rollers? To calculate belt pull, we use the same equation as before, 0.04 for bearing resistance, 100 feet for the conveyor length, and the total weight on the rollers, which equals 10 pounds per foot of belting, 5 pounds per foot of rolling stock, and 30 pounds per foot of product, yields a total belt pull requirement of 180 pounds. Let's check what the power requirement is to provide a belt pull of 180 pounds instead of 110 pounds. You remember that power equals force times velocity, so our new belt pull requirement of 180 pounds multiplied by 100 feet per minute of belt speed yields a required power of 18,000 foot-pounds per minute. Since we know 33,000 foot-pounds per minute equals one horsepower, our required power equals 18,000 divided by 33,000, which yields a new power requirement of 0.55 horsepower. If we had selected 
0.4 horsepower because that exceeded 0.33 horsepower, we would have a problem from 8 a.m. till 10 a.m. every day when we attempted to move 120 pound boxes because required power exceeds installed power. So our power requirement is 0.55 horsepower. It would be incorrect to select a 0.4 horsepower motor. A better choice would be 0.75 horsepower motor so that we could handle the boxes throughout the entire shift without worrying about motor overload. We hope you enjoyed this short video. For additional videos that are related to this topic, click either of the two links provided at the bottom of this page. To access our website, click the link on the upper right hand corner of your monitor and to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please click the link in the upper left hand corner.